Welcome back, everyone. Did you get some of that delicious food out there? Enjoy some sunshine? I made it out of my green room, wandered around, sat at a picnic table, and saw all the wonderful, happy people out there. Thanks for joining us for this afternoon session of the main stage. We'll go through a range of topics during this main stage afternoon program. But we're going to start with some conversations that are really timely and very newsworthy. Since the beginning of 2018, there have been a few major US policy announcements that have really significant implications for the impact investing community, both uh, in domestic policy and for international development. So we have a pair of sessions here today that will give you the latest from the folks who are really at the leading edge of all of the conversations around how this new policy will affect anyone working in this community. So I'm so pleased that for our afternoon session today, we have Jim Sorensen with us, who is a renowned entrepreneur, business leader, societal innovator. Jim made a significant gift to the University of Utah in 2013 to create the Sorensen Impact Center. And Jim has been a foundational advocate uh, for Opportunity Zone legislation. So he'll talk to you more about his role in that legislation, his commitment to seeing it enacted, um, and please give a warm welcome to Jim Sorensen. Thank you, Lindsay. And uh, it's wonderful to be here at yet another SOCAP, and it's great to see the growth of this event and uh, to be able to be a part of the excitement and a lot of the themes that come out each year. And of course, the theme this year I think is really exciting and it's all about some of the policies that have been uh, passed and are in the process of being implemented that I think will have a dramatic effect on impact investing. Now, as an entrepreneur, uh, I've made a living in generating, testing, and collaborating on good ideas. And uh, in, the, in the area of philanthropy, I now spend my days really doing the same type of thing, looking for, evaluating, and uh, hopefully collaborating on successful ventures. And I think um, the efforts of the last uh, year have proven to be quite fruitful in the area of policy. I think the, uh, the collaboration between uh, philanthropy, between investors in the investment community, between government and local leaders and service providers in the nonprofit community will be key in uh, the policies that have been enacted and particularly the Opportunity Zone legislation. I had the opportunity to be able to work with um, the architects of the uh, Economic Opportunity Zone legislation, uh, John Latiri and Steve Glickman with EIG, and from the early days saw really a chance to um, be part of a, a, a policy that would bring traditional investors into the impact investing field. And the thing that I liked about the uh, Opportunity Zone legislation was the focus on the distressed communities and the needs that were uh, in those communities for investable uh, opportunities and capital that would be motivated to, to invest there. I was uh, fortunate to have uh, some relationships uh, in, uh, in Congress and in the Senate and worked with uh, with Senator Hatch and Speaker Ryan uh, in advocating the passage of the Opportunity Zone legislation and was thrilled to see that it was included in the Tax Reform Act uh, at the end of last year. We're now in the process where the initial uh, regs have been released by Treasury just this past week, and it's exciting to see uh, the questions that were uh, around this legislation start to be answered and uh, pleased with uh, kind of the preliminary read 
of the regulations that they appear to be investor friendly and enable uh, success of this legislation. I see a real need for a real holistic approach to investing in opportunity zones. It's not uh, solely real estate and it's not solely uh, entrepreneurs and, and business development. It's really going to be a combination that focuses on both of these areas as well as the gaps and the needs in the communities that relate to making these, uh, these communities truly transform to more vibrant, uh, economically dynamic uh, communities. This includes, of course, workforce development. Uh, it includes the, the right kind of housing and uh, the right opportunities and support systems that will attract entrepreneurs and new businesses to be able to locate and thrive in opportunity zones. Today with us, um, I'm pleased to be uh, able to introduce the, one of the, the key architects, the co-founder of EIG, John Latiri, who's now the president of EIG, that can talk a little bit about what's ahead as it relates to uh, the regulatory framework and the promise of Opportunity Zones, and also Raj Shah with the Rockefeller Foundation, the president of the Rockefeller Foundation, that can talk about what philanthropy is doing in this very important area to make sure that this legislation achieves the promise that it does uh, for uh, these communities around the country.